It's good to be in God's presence. It's good to be in His presence. It's here. Amen. Lord, we honor you. Amen. You know the Lord is with you. Yes, sir. The Lord is with you. Because you cannot be in this place at this time. Right now. Whatever feeling you have felt in your body, and you are still feeling, that is the touch of the Lord. That is the Lord touching you. Amen. So, let's we all call for it and let the Lord have His way. So we didn't follow any protocol. We are only following His leading. So for those that are still waiting, when will the church start? It has long started. And we are about finishing. Because the Lord is here. And I pray that as your heart have been opening for the Lord right now, you begin to understand it. Said, wasn't our heart burning within us? While on the road, it was explaining the scriptures to us. Your heart will be set ablaze by the word. The understanding of the scriptures will set your heart ablaze. Jeremiah said, his word is my heart, like fire that is shut up in my bones. You cannot have understanding of his word and you don't reach out to others. It makes you feel unpleasant. You cannot be carrying fire on your, in your bones. The heat is so much that you are consumed by the passion for the Lord. You cannot be carrying the fire of God in your bones and you are complacent. You cannot be carrying the fire of God in your bones and you are inactive. Said, You shall receive power, Act 1 8, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. <coughs> In Judea, in Samaria, and in the uttermost part of the earth. People will not know you until they begin to know you in your locality. People will not know you and celebrate you until they begin to identify who you are in your neighborhood. So you must preach the word from your family, from your neighborhood, from your locality. And the Lord will begin to expand you. Amen. You cannot begin to want expansion and increase. It doesn't just come like that. It comes in stages. So the kingdom of God is like a man that sowed a seed, scattered a seed on the ground. He sleeps and wakes up. I doesn't know how. And then here comes the hair, and then the head, and then the full blown harvest. The blessings you want doesn't just come exponentially, doesn't just come rapidly, it comes in stages. So you have to know how the Holy Spirit operates the seed. Luke chapter 8 verse 11 is the word of God. It must be planted. And that's why you have to preach the word. As you preach the word, then you become the sower. 2 Timothy chapter 4, we read from verse 1. I charge you therefore before God. This was the word of Paul to Timothy. I charge you therefore 
When you hear the word charge, it's an instruction. It's a must. It's not a should. It's a must. What you must do. I, ch I charge you therefore before God. As we are here in God's presence, I'm charging you as well. And everyone that is watching and listening, I charge you therefore, if you're a believer, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus. If Jesus is indeed your Lord, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge. It was a judge. There is going to be a judgment day. It's not that I go to church. It's not that I am called by a Christian name. It's not that my parents are Christian, so I'm also a Christian. It doesn't come like that. It has to come by choice. We will judge the living and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom. Now you know who is going to do the judging. Verse 2. Preach the word. Turn somebody and say, preach the word. Preach the word. But the challenge is, <coughs> we know the word, don't we? It's the gospel of Christ, isn't it? But if you don't internalize the word, if you don't know the word personally, how can you preach? You cannot preach because you are born in a church. You cannot preach because you are called a Christian name. You cannot preach because you are a church member. You cannot give what you don't have. The reason why people don't preach, I will soon tell you. The reason why you are not often charged to study the Bible, I will soon tell you. The reason why it's not just your liking, it's just, it's just not your pattern to wake up in the morning and the first thing you will do is to pray and study the Bible. The reason why people don't do it, I will soon tell you. And I will also tell you the reason why some people do it. I will also tell you the reason why people like you and I will wake up in the morning I will find a quiet place to talk to God our Father and then study the Word of God every day. I will tell you the reason why we do it. And if you are doing it, then this Word is for you. And even if you are not doing it, listen. Maybe your heart can be softened by God and then you begin to do it. Say, so I charge you Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, we will judge the living. So no one will go without his judgment. Everyone will stand before his judgment seat. Everyone. Good. Now, let's go on. Preach the word. But the word has to be preached. You are like the sower. In Luke 8 verse 11, it tells us that the seed is the word of God. Incidentally, we have this parable of the sower repeated or uh, recited and recorded rather in the book of Matthew chapter 13, Mark chapter 4, and Luke chapter 8. We will see what we can do to now pick each one of them and bring out the salient point in there. But beginning from that Luke 8, 11, said the seed is what? The word. the word of God. And the sower went out to sow. Mark chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4, we are told. Mark chapter 4, you see there, from verse 25. 
Let's back up a bit. He says, for whoever has to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. He's telling you about the fact that if you understand or if you have received anything from the Lord, it must be used for the service of the Lord. If you are the one that is a sower of the seed, that word of God must be planted in other people's lives. Otherwise, if you are not doing that, that word will not benefit you. So he's saying here, whoever has to him more will be given because you are making use of it. You are planting it in the lives of other people. So more will be given. Many people are asking for understanding of the word of God, more understanding. But the, even the little understanding they have, they have not used that understanding. They have not planted that seed in other people's lives. He's saying here, whoever asks to him more will be given. Maybe we should even go back two verses. He says, if anyone asks ears to hear, let him hear. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we are hearing and nodding, you must understand what is getting into you, the word of God, so that you can do. He goes on to say, then he said to them, take it what you hear. It's important what you are hearing. Your response is important to what you are hearing. Your response will determine your result. Your response will determine what you will get and how much. Amen. Amen. Take it. This is the word of Jesus. He said, take it. Be careful. What you hear. In other verses, in other places, it said, be careful how you hear. So both what you hear and how you hear are both important. Because even the devil wants a space in your heart. But not in my heart. Is it in your heart? Don't give, don't give him, don't give in to the devil. So that's why he's saying, take it what you hear. You have to sift them. Sift them. Sift what you are hearing. It goes on to say, with the same measure, with the same response, with the same attitude. A little while ago, I was telling you about act of worship. How we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. Those are the response. Because the Lord is already here in the midst of those that are worshiping. Say God is looking for true worshippers. So we we'll know who is a true worshipper by your act, by your the way you worship God. He goes on to say, take it what you hear with the same measure, the same response, the same attitude you put into getting understanding from the word of God, the seed. It says it will be measured to you. It's what you sow that you will reap. It's how much you put into God's word, the study of God's word, that you get back from it. You say, I don't understand. You don't understand because every time the word is being planted, you are not at home. It's like the word, the seed falling onto the roadside, the wayside. You see, it goes on to say, it will be measured to you. What will be measured to you? Your response to receiving the word is the same way you will get understanding. So if I have 25% response, I will get 25% back. But if I give God all my 100%, it cannot be more than that, 100%. Of my heart to the study of God's word, how much will I get back? Did I say that? 
That's the word the Lord said. So either believe it or you don't believe it. Now you know why some people don't preach the word. The title is preach the word. You cannot preach unless you know what to preach. If you don't spend your time studying the word of God, you cannot preach. And we have many people in the church that way. You cannot give what you don't have. So I would rather spend my time to get it. Because I know the secret of increase is giving out. So once I get it, the word of God, I will give it out to people. My neighbor. The people around me. My workmates. My classmates. Because if the fire, the word of God, is in my bone, if I don't talk about it, it will burn. If I don't talk about it, I'll feel so uncomfortable. So I have to talk about it so I can get more. You wonder why you are not increasing the knowledge of God. You will not increase in the knowledge of, knowledge of God until you begin to give it up. The secret of increase is giving up. Now it goes on. It says, verse 25. For whoever asks to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. The one that will be taken away is the one that you are holding. Because you are not using it. You are not giving it out to people. So the way you increase in the knowledge of God is by preaching the word. Preaching the word. Preaching the word to people. Preaching the word to them. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go back to that. Or let's continue. Verse 26. And he said, Jesus is talking here. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. So scatter in those days because they do not have that mechanized farming Two that will plow in a straight line, you know, and then will plant. They scatter it with the hope that it will grow. And it does, they did. They just scatter it. So it's the same thing, you and I, we plant the word of God, we scatter it to whoever wants to hear. We go to the tube station, train station, we go to the bus stops, in the in the box, we talk to people. You see? You don't have to be verbose before you can preach. You can just sit by their side and talk to them. God will send to you, send people to you. But you see, He only sent people to you because He wanted to increase. And the secret of increase is what? Giving up. So He wants you to increase. To whom much is given, much is expected. He wanted to increase. So don't say, why me? He wants you wanted to increase. He sent people your way. So He cannot keep mom. People that keep mum is because they don't have the fire. Mm -hmm. Now you know why people don't preach the word. So it goes on to say, The kingdom of God is as if a man to scatter seed on the ground. Who is the man? You. You and I. We are the ones that are born again. Are the ones that have entitlement to plant the seed. Not everyone can plant seed. How can they plant what they don't have? Are you with me? Yes. And should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. Turn somebody and say, does, does, not know how. does not know how. Because it is spiritual. Paul plant, Apollo water, but God brings increase. How the increase will come is not your business. The day the increase will come is not your business. You don't know. He says, when will, the, when will God restore the kingdom? We don't know. Only the Father knows the time. But God expects you that you are hearing and watching to plant and water. And there are many ways you can plant. You can distribute tracts. 
You can distribute tracts to people and tell them about Christ or use the word of mouth. Begin with your from with begin at your own Jerusalem, your spouse, your children, your family. You cannot be a real champion unless you start as a local champion. When your neighbors don't know you, they only know that you go to church and you carry the Bible which you don't talk to them about. Can, you, can we really say that you have the fire in your bone? Hallelujah. Yeah. The fire in the bone will heal every osteoporosis. The fire in the bone will heal every bone disease. Hallelujah. Yeah. It should sleep by night, rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself, the one that is planting the seed, does not know how. Yours is to scatter the seed. Preach the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Preach the word. In John chapter 17, John 17, verse 17, can you now see what Christ is saying here? Why some will still not preach and why some will preach? Because it's only what you have that you can give. But Jesus Christ is talking to his followers here. The same one that Paul charged to Timothy. Jesus Christ is saying here from verse 17. In fact, verse 16 says, They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. So the people that I was talking to are his followers. You and I, those that will preach the word. And those that will not preach the word, definitely, you can become his follower also when you give your heart to the Lord. He's saying here, verse 17, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. One of the translations is dedicate, dedicate yourself, dedicate them by your truth. Your word is truth. The word sanctify means you dedicate yourself to the word. Sanctify them by your truth. Dedicate yourself to the truth. The truth you are not dedicated to, you cannot be eager to spread it. Amen? Amen. You see, that's why some of us will keep quiet while other people are swearing by our side. Some of us will keep quiet while there are some immoral words going on around us. But some will not keep quiet. They either move away or will challenge the source of that negative word. Because each time you continue to hear the negative words, the negativity begins to feel inside you. You wonder why evil thoughts continue. You wonder why, why your mind is impure. Watch what you hear. Now it goes on to say, sanctify them by your truth. Jesus here talking to his father. Let them be dedicated to your truth. Once they are dedicated to your truth, they will be able to preach your truth. Once they live their life to your, to your truth, they will be able to talk to people about it. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. So you can see he was talking to who? His followers. Is this word still applicable today? Yes. yes because you and I we are sent. In the great commission that he gave to me, he said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we have a correlation is in Mark chapter 16 from verse 15. See, go into the world and preach the gospel. 
It's always about preaching the gospel. Preach the word of God. And Romans 1 16, Paul said, I am not, for I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for anyone that believes. How can you be ashamed of the same thing that will promote you? Now you can see, secondly, why some people don't preach the word of God. He goes on to say, Jesus continued verse 19 of that John 17, And for their sakes, I sanctified myself, I dedicated myself, I devoted myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. You see, I dedicate myself to the truth. I'm living by the truth. Whatever you you dedicate yourself to, the word of God, it will make you holy. It will make you to be like God. You cannot be like God without the word of God. Amen. Amen. Because God is holy. So, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Very important. And so, Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, Jeremiah 20, verse 9, he also went on to tell us about the fact that the word of God is like a in my heart, it's like fire that is shut up in my bones. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And in Luke chapter 24, we read also when those two disciples were on the road and Jesus Christ met them, the resurrected Jesus met them on the road but they did not know that it was him. Verse 28. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is fast spent. They did not know it was Jesus. <clears throat> and they have been his follower. But this is this was Jesus. That was raised from the dead. So there was a transfiguration. That was a change. Isn't it? Verse 30. Now it came to pass. As he sat at the table with them. And he took bread. Blessed and broke it. And gave it to them. Remember what he was doing. They were breaking. Uh, having communion. Isn't it? At this time. Then their eyes were opened. As a result of the communion that they had, their eyes were opened. So you can see the blessing in a proper communion. People can be healed just by taking the communion table together. Sharing the communion table together. People can be healed. These men, were, their eyes were opened because of the communion that they had together with the Lord. And this communion is only for people they are already in communion with God. Mm -hmm. 